Calling to order the regular meeting of the Wheeling Planning Commission for Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Blanova. Here. Commissioner Berkey. Here. Commissioner Sprague is here. Commissioner Hyken. Here. Commissioner Riles is uh, not present at the moment. At the moment. Uh, Commissioner Yednick is absent with previous notice. Chairman Johnson. Here. Uh, let's see. We'll wait for Ms. Nyes to get back. Are there any changes to the agenda tonight? No. Oh, okay. Then next up is citizens' concerns and comments. So let's see. This is we don't have a general one, do we? Yeah, we do. Oh, no. we do. Oh, I left it up there. <laughs> well, that there was nothing. Do oh, okay. Okay. So there was no general no concerns general. and comments. Uh, we have no consent items tonight, so we'll go right into the items for review. Where we have docket number 2021-28, special use to approve a health clinic for aid for women, 111 to 115 North Wolf Road. Mr. Secretary. Aid for women, contact purchaser seeks a special use is required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-10, use regulations and associated sections in order to permit a health clinic in the MXC Commercial Residential Mixed Use District for the property located at 111 and 115 North Wolf Road. A special use as defined in the zoning code is a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Planning Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request meets the standards for a special use as established in Title 19. The commission chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the plan commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the village board. Thank you. Ms. Nyes, anything on this for the petitioner? Um, yes, so Aid for Women is here tonight to request a special use, which is required for a health clinic in the MXC zoning district. Um, staff did not propose any conditions, uh, but one thing I did want to mention is the parking. Um, as you'll notice, there's um, five parking spots that are existing, and those five parking spaces are the same ones that have been here since the 60s. And since they're not proposing any changes to the um, parking lot or the outside of the building, it'll retain its legal non-conforming status, and they will, will not be required to have more than five parking spaces. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. And the petitioner is here? Yes. Okay, anyone that's going to speak, I need to swear them in. Raise your right hand. Do you, swear the, do you swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? Yes. Thank you. Um, as you speak, please state your name and business address for the record, and please tell us what it is you want to do. Sure. Um, thank you for um, allowing us to be here this evening. My name is Susan Barrett, and I am Executive Director of Aid for Women, located at 8 South Michigan Avenue, Suite 1418, Chicago, 60603. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, you don't yeah, take you it. Can. I thought you had to state your name, oh, no. too. Well, only, when, only when she's going to start talking. <laughs> okay. So as I said, my name is Susan Barrett, and I have had the honor of serving as the Executive Director of Aid for Women for 12 years. Aid for Women is under contract to purchase the site subject to obtaining a special use for the proposed clinic. 
We are excited about the project of establishing a pregnancy care center in Wheeling. Aid for Women is a network of seven pregnancy help medical clinics and maternity homes throughout the Chicago metropolitan area. Aid for Women is an Illinois 501c3 non-for-profit corporation founded in 1978 and affiliated with the Archdiocese of Chicago. Services provided include pregnancy tests, ultrasound exams, consultations, medical and community referrals, support programs, and maternity homes. All services are offered free of charge. The organization employs 20 people across seven locations. The Wheeling location would function as a pregnancy help health clinic offering medical grade pregnancy tests, limited obstetrical ultrasound exams, and emotional and material support. Three people would work at the Wheeling location. Normal business hours would be Monday through Friday during the daytime. There would be approximately four appointments per day. Um, there might be some Saturday hours from time to time. Women would receive ongoing support, including items that they might need, such as diapers, strollers, and cribs. Um, it is not, however, just a place for freebies. Only women who participate in the online educational program, Bright Course, can qualify to receive basic material items. The Bright Course program includes lessons in pregnancy, prenatal care, birth and infant care, and um, the entire program and the material support are all free of charge. And uh, we just thank you for your consideration and look forward to working with the Village of Wheeling. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing, so uh, we do have someone who signed up from the public to make a comment. Did you want, did you want me to? Oh, yeah. Can I just say, I'm, say that? I'm sorry. Hi. No, not a problem. I thought she was done with the presentation part. <laughs> That's all right. My name is Hortensia Esquivel, and it's my privilege to represent Aid for Women in its acquisition of the property. Um, and I just wanted to address the parking area. So there are those five spaces. Um, and it's how the property has, was developed and has existed for a long time. Um, there's no room for additional parking spaces, and we understand that with two exam rooms and three employees, that would, we would technically need the seven spaces. Um, however, we actually feel comfortable that we will be fine with just the five spaces, um, but we also have from the neighbor to the north Jeffrey Lane's um, a letter agreement allowing us to use parking spaces Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So that should, um, you know, more than sufficiently cover our needs for parking. Um, and that's it. We have some photographs just of one of our other pregnancy care centers and some of our happy clients, if you'd like to take a look. And um, that's it. I know we have one of our um, clinic managers, who's a nurse, Joanne. Grammy, mm -hmm. um, here too. She's not going to. I don't have. Okay. She's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's just here. Our clinic um, manager, a so registered be a, nurse, be a manager at the site. So. Okay, very good. That's all. All right. So, as I was saying, this is a public hearing. Um, we do have one person who signed up to talk about this item. Uh, Mary Deutsch. Deutsch. <laughs> not sure which way it goes. <laughs> Thank you. This is, uh, I guess, where you end. You swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth. Yes. And then state your name and address. My name is Mary Deach, and I live at 901 Beverly Drive in Wheeling, Illinois, 60090. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. As stated, my name is Mary Deach, and I have lived in Wheeling for 13 years. My husband and I um, are raising our five children here. Um, and I'm here today to support Aid for Women and their request for a special use permit at 111 North Wolf Road. Aid for Women is a positive asset to any community. They've been in operation since 1979 and now have offices providing services for women in need in Des Plaines, Waukegan, Cicero, Chicago, and Flossmoor. The organization is exceptionally well managed and I'm certain they will be good neighbors to all who they will encounter in Wheeling. There's a great need for services that, that, for the services that Aid for Women provides, 
Through various volunteer experiences, I know many women can be in difficult situations as they discover they might be pregnant and consider how they can prepare to provide for a newborn baby. Aid for Women is there for pregnant women who need help. They accompany mothers through pregnancies and can provide just about anything a pregnant mother may need. Mothers may need diapers, formula, baby clothing, child care or transportation to a job, or even job training itself. In some situations, mothers may also need counseling. With so many women in need in the Northwest suburbs, I think we have a moral obligation to reach out to those on the margins, and that is what Aid for Women does in a compassionate and loving way. I have witnessed some of the wonderful work, and after the office opens, I hope you can too. Thank you for the opportunity to offer my support for Aid to Women. Thank you. If there are no other public comments, then we'll go to the commission. Oh, Commissioner Riles came. <laughs> um, and we'll start with you then. Do you have any questions for these petitioners? Um, I don't have any uh, particular questions, but I do want to uh, add that I think what uh, uh, what you're offering, um, not only to the community, uh, but for women, uh, young women uh, in need of support, is very commendable. And uh, I appreciate what you uh, offer to bring to the community of Wheeling and I hope that it's a, uh, a benefit for all. All right. Commissioner Blanova. No questions. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the one question I had, they answered in their presentation. Um, otherwise, I think it uh, sounds like a wonderful service that you're offering, and I thank you for choosing Wheeling. That's all I have. Commissioner Berkey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no questions, and I uh, just want to add that uh, welcome to the community. I look forward to seeing uh, your good work here. Commissioner Hyken. Uh, no questions, but ditto with what everybody else said. Thank you for doing what you do and coming to Wheeling. All right. Thank you. Um, do you have access to the parking, so-called parking area in the back at all? Just wondering. I know there's some empty ground back there. You have to come up here. I think there is, on, on the east side of Jeffrey Lanes, mm -hmm. I think there is sort of a, a, a little a, some in. access. I don't know if it would. Yeah, I can't tell from the aerial. I mean, I think a car area. could fit through it, right? Yeah, I think it, it could be. I was just it's, wondering. Right, right. Right now, it's just. It's probably not very handy. Developed, right. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, and will you be taking donations for strollers, cribs, that kind of thing, or do you get those from somewhere else? Um, for safety reasons, we usually don't take used equipment, strollers, cribs, and things like that because of all the recalls that are happening. So um, when it comes to equipment, um, what we usually do, people will give us gift cards um, for like Target or a store like that, and then um, we help the mom buy new equipment to, with the gift cards. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only questions I had when we had no conditions on this? No, no conditions. Um, anything else from the commission? Left and right? Nope. Okay, I, I agree this is going to be a great thing to have in town. Um, so, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Seconded. Hyken and Berkey. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. Thank you. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion to close the public hearing on 2021-28. So moved. Second. Mr. Sprague is a yes. Oh, voice vote? Uh, no, roll call. Okay. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. 
All right, moving on to docket number 2021-29, a variance to increase fence height from four feet to six feet in a front yard setback. One of these very familiar things to us. Mr. Secretary. Stephen Schaefer, property owner, seeks a variation as required under Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-10, use regulations and associated sections to permit a six-foot-tall opaque wood fence within the front yard setback along Vera Lane in the R3 single-family residential district for the property located at 554 Briarwood Drive. A zoning variation is intended to be a method of adjustment to equalize regulations where the zoning code has created an unnecessary hardship. A variation is designed to allow affected property owners the same rights and privileges that others enjoy in the same zoning district. In order to, grant, to be granted a variation, a petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Plan Commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the Village Code, including but not limited to how their individual situation is unique or unusual. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request for variation meets the standards established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the Plan Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Ms. Nyes, anything? Uh, <clears throat> yes, so this is similar to the ones that we've seen. And first I wanted to say that there will be a proposed text amendment for um, the fence um, regulations coming before you on August 25th. So that should be, maybe this will be the last one. Um, so um, again, their front uh, driveway is along Briarwood, but they also front on Vera Lane. So they have two front yard setbacks that are 25 feet. So in order for them to put a fence up along their, what is really their side yard on the north side of their house along Vera Lane, they'll need this um, um, variation to put a six foot tall fence. They could, they are permitted to put a four foot tall fence, but in order for it to be six foot tall, they need this variation. Um, I think that's it. All right, is the petitioner here? Yes, she's here. <laughs> You guys behave back there. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching you. I, uh, I need to swear you in. Uh, do you swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? Yes. Okay. Please state your name and address, and you can take the mask off while uh, you're here talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, Caroline Schaefer, um, property owner, 554 Briarwood Drive, Wheeling, Illinois. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking to put up a six-foot fence, uh, mainly for those uh, <laughs> rugrats back there. Uh, privacy, safety, security, um, just to close off our, our backyard. Okay. We, we're we very familiar with these. We've <laughs> had a lot of them during this pandemic, I think. Um, and we had no public comments, so start the other end. Commissioner Hyken, any questions? No questions. Mr. Berkey. No questions. Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's a cedar fence that you're yes. putting in? Are you planning on staining or sealing it at all? Uh, yes. You are? Okay, great. That's, that's all I had. Thank you. Oh. Commissioner Blanova? No questions. And Commissioner Riles? No questions. Uh, okay. Is, is this connecting to a fence that's in the backyard? Um, so our neighbor does have a fence along, yeah, right oh, okay. there. So you're, uh, so yeah, you're butting up to that. Okay. Just wasn't yeah, clear. Yeah, I think they got a variance as well. <laughs> along oh, there. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, obviously, we have no conditions on this. No conditions. No other questions from the commission? Left, right. Okay. Then how about a motion to approve? So move. Second. Got it. Mm. Mr. Eichen? Yes. Mr. Berkey? Yes. Mr. Blanova? Yes. Mr. Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Thank okay, you. I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Thank you. And we need a motion to close 2021-29. So moved. Second.
Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. Commissioner Villanova? Yes. Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Docket number 2021-25, special use to approve preliminary plan unit development for London Crossing, 889 to 903 West Dundee Road. Mr. Secretary. Wingspan Development Group, LLC, property owner is seeking special use approval for preliminary plan unit development approval as required in Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-10, use regulations and associated sections for development of a mixed-use development, commercial, institutional, and residential located at 889 through 903 West Dundee Road, which is zone MXT, transit-oriented mixed-use. A special use, as defined in the zoning code, is a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to the potential for negative impacts on surrounding properties. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the plan commission at a public hearing that the request meets the standards of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request meets the standards for special use as established in Title 19. The commission chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the plan commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the village board. Thank you. Ms. Nyes. Hi. Um, well, we have a team of people here, and they have a presentation ready, but just uh, to intro it, um, the project London Crossing is here to receive preliminary planned unit development approval, which requires a special use. That is the first docket that is open for the public hearing. After that, we have another docket, which is not the public hearing, and that'll be to talk about the preliminary plat. So there's um, two different items that we'll talk about. For the preliminary PUD, um, you'll see in the staff report, um, staff had a list of items that we had suggested the plan commission discuss, and then we had a list of conditions. <coughs> Um, but I think the uh, petitioner will address a lot of those. Oh, there you are. Good evening. Good evening. So are you in? <laughs> do you swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? I do. And state your name and business address. My <laughs> name is Chris Coleman. My business address is 1001 Vianville Drive in Mount Prospect. I'm with Wingspan Development. And with me tonight, we've got representatives from Cage Engineering as well as District 21. So Good. they're available for comment or question. All right. Just let me know when you want me to move the slides. You do the, you, okay. She has the magic mouse. Yeah. This is, Marcy's got a lot of control here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thank you all very much for the opportunity to come in and present tonight. We're very excited about making the presentation. We're even more excited about getting started. This has been a long time coming. We've gone through uh, a lot of process and a lot of hurdles to get here tonight. And as an example, including remapping of the floodplain, which was a big effort on the part of the village, and thank goodness that got resolved. Uh, negotiations or conversations about a signalization of Cedar Street, conversations about the elimination of the pedestrian crossing, over Dundee, and then staff changes here at the village. So going through all of those processes, there's uh, a lot of time and effort and sweat coming into these plans, hundreds of hours of time on our part, our consultants' parts, and staff's part. So I want to acknowledge everybody's help and contribution to getting us to where we are today and what we're calling a new gateway into Wheeling. Uh, and. Uh, Hopefully at the end of tonight and at the end of the board meeting we can get started because we really want to we really want to finish what we started with the demolition of these wonderful buildings that you see on the screen right now. So we're going to do a little bit of a walk down memory lane. Marcy, if you could go to the 
Next slide. So the property is about 11 and a half acres. It's on the south side of Dundee, about 550 feet west of Elmhurst Road, immediately adjacent to London School to the west and Dunhurst Plaza to the east, which we do not control. So we can talk about it, but we don't have any influence over Dunhurst. Uh, and Dunhurst is the center that has the Pancake House, the book, book ended by the Pancake House, and then uh, Sherwin-Williams. That is not ours. If you could go to the next slide, please. This is looking at the, at the property from the north looking to the south. And you can see uh, the, the two, it's really two buildings. It's been three uses. It's been more than three uses over the course of time. It was most recently the IF Furniture Gallery, uh, sun, sunrise Market, always amazing. It was a Save-A-Lot at one time. It was an Aldi at one time. I think it was a Sears store the, the at one, one time. Was, yeah. So it's gone through a lot of uses this site has. Uh, unfortunately, it's seen a lot of turnover, a lot of dark days, and a lot of deferred maintenance. It's never really been properly maintained. And it's unfortunate because it's a great section of Dundee Road here with nice traffic counts and a great, as we say, gateway uh, into the village. So Marcy, if you could go through. So this, this shot is from Dundee Road looking south. All of the photos here are courtesy of our good friends at Google. This is looking south. We essentially control from that curb you see in the, in the island uh, by the do not enter sign going west. So it might be hard to see, but that's the Sherwin-Williams store on the left side. Again, we don't control that. We just control everything going west to the London School property. And we'll just flip through these slides. I just want to refresh everybody's memory as to what was on the property. Because as, you know, after the property is raised and the buildings are gone, sometimes we forget what was there. But this is what we came into, and this is what we were excited about changing for the village's behalf. So thank you. This is an aerial of the property, and in this aerial you can see the outlines of the two old buildings. The lower left-hand corner of the property is very wet. It's a low area. It holds water after rains. I mean, you see ducks there. It's, a, it's not an ideal situation. Most of what you see on this aerial that's green, the vegetated areas, is bad soils. That's one of the things that impacts the property that's causing us to come in separate from this. We're coming in for TIF support for the project, mostly related to bad soil conditions. And these are not any kind of contamination. It's simply bad soils. Uh, the village itself actually looked at one time of putting a fire station on this property and abandoned the project because the soil conditions were so bad it couldn't support the building. So we have to do a lot of haul off, a lot of uh, export, and then bringing in structural fill. So currently it's two lots of record, it's two buildings, the lot lines actually bisect one of the buildings. But what we're planning is we're planning as what's been submitted is uh, a four lot PUD. And Marcy, if you can go through uh, one slide. So this is, this is our plan. You can see we've planned it uh, using, you know, what's typically called best design practices where we're going from lower density on the south to higher density on the north. And we're using the townhomes on the south to create a buffer between the single family homes on Norman and the commercial retail that's going to be on Dundee. Currently that does not exist. Those houses on Norman back right up to what was the loading dock of the old Sears store. So by using, by incorporating the residential townhomes to the south, we create that buffer. The next slide please. So that green box just identifies the townhome component. Okay, you can go to the next one. The north part is all the retail, commercial, and uh, administrative office for District 21. So it's four lots. The townhome is lot one. The district, what is going to be the district center is lot two. Then you've got lot three. Marcy, you could go to the next one. Lot three is there to the and then lot four. And lot four is not shown on this. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But lot four is going to be a future, uh, another retail user. But in our conversations with staff, we decided that we were going to table that till after we get through this round of preliminary approvals. And then Patrick Ainsworth with the village and I will be able to work on potential retail users 
who they want to see activity on the property. They've got a time horizon that they, they want to know when a store can open before they start really investing time in it. So as soon as we get these approvals and we get started working on the property, then Patrick Ainsworth and I can work on identifying who the user is going to be for that lot four. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with the property. I'd like to start with the row homes. You can keep going, Marcy. And I'm going to go kind of clockwise starting with the row homes. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a blow up of the site plan. This is a colored landscape plan. You have the landscape plan in your package. You don't have this color version because this just came in. But the townhome component is 10 buildings. Each building is five townhomes. Uh, there, we've extended Jenkins Court as a private road, but with the same built to what they call public standards. Uh, we have, we're showing a sidewalk, a carriage walk on the south side of Jenkins. So you can pick up residential traffic, pedestrian traffic from the south and carry those people who would be walking on a sidewalk. They can walk that sidewalk along the new private Jenkins Court all the way west to London School. They can also cross the street at Jenkins and go north through a gate that we're going to put in a fence onto a sidewalk into the new commercial center. Then they can actually get to our commercial buildings, and then they could also get to the Dunhurst Plaza. So there's a grocer in there. If you wanted to go to the grocery store and you lived south, you could go up King, cross over, go up that sidewalk, get into the shopping center, and go to the grocery store. We don't show the sidewalk on the north side of Jenkins. There are no residential users on the north side of Jenkins as you go from where it ends now all the way to Elmhurst Road. There's a church and then a restaurant. There's no residences. There's no neighbors walking on the street. But neighbors would be coming potentially from the north, particularly to get to the school. I don't know how many people will actually walk to the grocery store or maybe to get pancakes, but I think the kids would be walking north on King, cutting over to go to London. Um, uh, so the drive also, the drive can go through up into the commercial area. You can do that. It's not convenient. It's designed to not be convenient because we're trying to avoid people on Dundee Road getting stopped at the light of Elmhurst, making a quick right turn, coming down into our neighborhood, our new neighborhood, and then cutting over on Jenkins to Elmhurst. By, the, by designing it this way, it's kind of a convoluted path, so it's not going to be an ideal shortcut. Uh, great if you live there, not great if you're trying to cut through. Uh, Marcy, if you could go to the next slide. So this is a blow up of the landscaped courts in between the buildings. So these, these row homes or townhomes have the front door on one side of the building and the garage in the back. I want to uh, one thing I think is important for you to know is that these townhomes, these row homes, are 22 feet wide. I know that in recent times, neighborhoods have been improved in the village that were narrower, and it presented a challenge where you had a front door on the same side of the townhome as the garage, and the garage ended up being compressed. These are garage on one side, front door on the other, 22 feet wide, so you've got plenty of room in the garage for your cars and your garbage cans. It's not going to be an issue here. Um, and in this drawing, you can actually see we also have uh, plantings in the motor courts as well to try to soften those up so it's not just a paved hard area. But we have two car garages and two spaces behind each townhome, so plenty of parking. Plus, we've got guest spots. You can see some guest spots right there on the lower, the bottom of that image. You can see four guest spots there. Okay, Marcy, can we go? Thank you. So this is representative of the architectural design of the townhomes. It's very popular today. It's a mix of brick and siding with attractive detailing like uh, brick soldier course, uh, box bay windows, and highly appointed trim around the, around the windows where they're siding. Uh, one of the comments in the staff report was, Marcy, if you can go to the next slide. So this shows the mix of the siding and the brick. And one of the comments in the staff report was uh, the village has guidelines that say don't mix vertical siding with horizontal siding. And Marcy, stop me if I speak incorrectly on the part of the village. But this design is very popular today. So 
to the extent those, those guidelines were drafted at a time when that was not a popular uh, architectural design, this today is a popular architectural design. And I think in these uh, renderings, it's shown and it, and it elevates in life, in real life, very attractively. Uh, there were other comments related to the townhomes as it regarded the brick color. And then also mixing two different siding colors. And there are samples, three different uh, color packages. Yeah, and there are, so you've seen, so you've had an opportunity to see those, see those. And the townhome builder that we're going to be working with, we're going to be doing the land development and then partnering with Ryan Homes, who we've done other developments with. We have a very good working relationship with them. They are fine alternating building, alternating siding colors by building. They do not want to alternate, and I don't think this was your intent, Marcy, at all, was alternating siding colors by unit. Mm -mm. No. So, no. In, so in terms of that, they're happy to work with staff prior to final on the actual siding colors. And if you want to add a second color palette so that you have two color palettes and you're mixing it up with the buildings, they're happy to do that. In terms of the brick color, they're also happy to work with you in bringing in a different brick color if for whatever reason those, those weren't satisfactory. So those were two conditions uh, in the staff recommendations that uh, I'm trying to address. But as I mentioned, these are extremely popular. Ryan does a very good job with the finishes. If you go to the next slide, you can scroll through some pictures of actual interior images of these plans. And if you want to go see these, I'm happy to tell Marcy. These are actually from a development that we're doing with Ryan right now in Mount Prospect called Maple Street Lofts. So they're very well received, very popular with people. The next, the next uh, lot I'd like to talk about is lot two. This, this will be the new home for District 21's administrative offices as well as a community center benefiting both the district and the district's clientele as well as the village's clientele and, and residents of Wheeling. Uh, if you go to the next slide, this, before we go in, I want to mention one thing. We, in the course of our conversations with staff, in the hundreds of hours that I alluded to earlier, one of the things that we tried to do, we worked with staff, and staff was great, was pulling the retail closer to the street. This is something that the village made, a, made an investment in uh, how to improve the walkability and the visibility of the village retail uh, users and so one of the things we did was we pulled everything closer to the street uh, but let's talk for a minute about lot two and Marcy if you can go to the next slide so we show here this is uh, the footprint of the new administrative building and you can also see the parking field to the what is to the east of the building and below the parking field is actually a vault detention system. Uh, so as, we, as I mentioned earlier with the soils, also the detention system here on this property is very expensive, but, it's, but we've got two different, we actually have three different basins. We got two basins and one underground system, three different uh, stormwater detention systems on the property. But underneath that parking field is uh, a detention vault system. And before you go to the next slide, I'd like to say, I'd actually like to read uh, a staff, staff comment about, about the administrative building architectural elevations that are in your package. The school, this is points one and two. Uh, the school district administration building, east and west building elevations shall incorporate recesses and or projections to reduce large expanses of black of blank walls facing public areas, and two, the school district administrative administration building elevation shall be revised to accurately display the full extent of the proposed building designs for each elevation. And I think that the district took that to heart and uh, demonstrated what, what I think you'll see is a genuine uh, effort to be a good partner. And they had 
you know, this is a work in process. So we get comments back from staff. We try to respond as quickly as possible. Sometimes just like this colored landscape plan, it doesn't get to us soon enough to get it in the packet. But I really think that as we go through these, you guys, you'll be pleased with what you see here as the district's response to the comments of staff. So Marcy, if you could go. So this is, this is a dramatic departure. No, that's, that's probably a little strongly stated. This is a great enhancement from what you have in your packet. And this is the north and west facades of the administrative center and community service building. So you can see a little uh, person with a briefcase in the, in the foreground there. That is the north facade. So that is the facade that is facing Dundee Road. The other, the longer wall, essentially runs parallel to the exit from London School. Okay? But you can see there's a lot of detail here that was not included in the plans that you had in your packet. There's a lot of fenestration with the window that you can see the standalone window immediately left of the lettering. And then that corner of the glass, I think, is very powerful. Marcy, can you go to the next one? This is the north and east facades. So you've got great contrast of color here. You've got great depth of the elevation. The elevation is moving back and forth. You've got this very interesting angle where the roof line creates a shadow along the face of the building. And you still get all that glass on Dundee. You can go to the next one, please. This is the whole, this is the east facade. So you see how that shadow line works. Uh, and I believe Archon is here too. So Archon, the architect, is also here. Uh, and you can see one of the things that didn't, uh, wasn't incorporated into the drawings that you had is the, what was going to happen on that, that tall component to the, what is to the south or to the left in this picture. But I think Archon did a great job and the district did a great job dressing that up and making it impactful. Plus all the glazing above the entry doors. If you can go to the next one. This is the south and east facades. So if that person on their bike got on their bike and rode their bike off the left side of the picture, they would go right into London School. OK, you can go to the next one. And this is uh, the south and west facades. So this would be if you were coming from the townhomes around that corner, this is kind of the corner that you would see. So that's the architecture for uh, the administrative, the administration building and the community center. If we can go and talk about the last section of the, of the development is lots three and four. And uh, you can keep going, Marcy. You know, as I mentioned, we believe this is a great location on Dundee Road with high traffic counts. And uh, we think that lots three and four will both be very attractive we're designing them both as drive-through buildings. There's a lot, there's a good amount of retail in Wheeling, but there's not a lot of drive-throughs. We think this is an ideal location for two drive-through buildings. You put a uh, quick serve or fast casual as an end cap on the building on lot three, and that's gonna bring in other users within that building that, that are complementary to that drive-through user. So we're very excited about that. In terms of the concept architecture, we are showing, Marcy, if you can go, sorry. So this is a, this is a, a zoom in on lot three, and then lot four is that green, shown as green space, but that will eventually be a single user drive-through, quick serve, fast casual restaurant that Patrick Ainsworth and I will work on. If you could go, go to the next one. Oh, oh. So this is, this is concept architecture for the inline retail on lot three. And uh, this is kind of hard to see because it's so long. But Marcy, if you could go to the next one, it shows a little bit more detail. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create something that was crisp and modern, but would also be enduring. We didn't want to come in with something that had a color combination that was super contemporary, but would be out of style in very short order. We believe that this is classic, classically modern. I'll use that term. And in terms of the final design, the final design will be subject, again, to the end user. So we'll be coming back with a final version of this that 
will incorporate the actual end users. Uh, and I also want to note that one of the comments in the staff report is that in this elevation, we're calling out uh, metal panel canopy, metal coping, uh, wood panel, me uh, wood grain metal panel. And so while we're calling out a lot of metal on this facade, the village's guidelines call for more masonry, and we can deliver a very similar look. It look and read like metal, but it'll actually be a masonry product. And we've been very successful with that. It'll, it, it's masonry, but it can look like metal. It's masonry, uh, uh, but it can look like wood. It's very attractive, and it's great from a maintenance standpoint. It requires almost no maintenance. So if you can go one more, Marcy. So that's, again, showing that lot four that's going to be, I don't want you to think that it's going to be a park or anything. It's going to be a single uh, user, quick serve, or fast casual restaurant. Okay, you can go one more. Thank you. So one of the question, one of the questions of staff, a request of staff, was that we incorporate a more residential light pole fixture into the townhomes. So we can very easily do that. The pole that you see here is a, a light fixture that we've used in other developments. It's very well received. It's got a nice look from a decorative standpoint. It's got nice light generation from a functional standpoint very attractive and uh, popular light pole. The other, the other image is the fence that we would put between the townhomes and the commercial. And this would essentially run on the north side of the townhomes or the south side of that detention basin. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's a gate in the fence so you can get go north on the sidewalk from Jenkins up into the commercial center, okay? One other thing I wanted to mention was that parking was, was raised as a concern by staff, and parking is always a legitimate concern. And I think, you know, in terms of presentation, sometimes things can uh, appear differently than they really end up being from a, from a practical standpoint. So within the submittal, we talk about lot one, lot two, lot three, lot four, and particularly with two, three, and four, we talk about uh, the size of the building and the parking provided and the parking required, but from a practical standpoint and actually from an agreement standpoint, those parking fields across the entire commercial area will be shared parking. So let's say the inline store, we've got a Chipotle on the end of that building, on the far west end of that inline store. We're lucky enough to get a Chipotle. And I come and I'm going to go, go in and get a burrito. I can park on the D21 property because there's a cross-sharing access agreement between lots one or between lots two and three. Conversely, if I come to a D21 meeting and I park in front of Chipotle, I can do that because it's a shared parking agreement. So I think that it is always important to try to determine if you have enough parking. But I think in this context, I encourage you to look at the overall parking as opposed to just what's the parking for lot one. The other thing that I would raise, or the other, the other counterpoint that I might suggest, is that a lot of guidelines for parking are based on the fact that you're going to build a building and you're not sure who the user is going to be. So you have to account for multiple different user types. And different users have different traffic demands. In this situation, we know who the user is because the user is the person building the building. So the district has a pretty good handle on, on uh, who their who their daily users are going to be, what that parking demand is going to be, and then who their clients are, what that parking demand is going to be. And I know that they're here tonight and they will share that they often want to have meetings with hundreds of people coming to the meetings and listening to their proposals and plans, but unfortunately that's not the case. So even though they do have public hearings, they're typically not uh, attended to the extent that they would need more parking than, they, than we have designed. However, Marcy, if you could put up the next slide, they have a unique benefit that, now this is a, I've stitched these two together, but on the top of this image is Dundee Road. The, on the right is our new plan with the new district office, the administrative building, and on the left is their existing parking field for London School where the district office currently is. So all the meetings, all the demands that they have today are met 
by the existing lot that's shared with the school. So going forward, they will not only have the parking that we're providing for the new building, but they'll also continue to uh, have use of the parking that they have at London School. Now that London School parking, I can't park there and go to Chipotle. But D21 can park there and go to their building because it's their parking. So I think in light of when you're looking at the parking requirements and the parking provided, there's more to take into account than what might instantly appear. Uh, so if you could go to the last slide, this is, this is my last slide. And just in summation, it's been a long time coming, but we're very excited to present tonight. Again, even more excited to get started. Been great working with staff. It's been a very, uh, very good back and forth, hammering out ideas. And uh, hopefully what we've presented tonight is appealing to you and uh, we can get approved and go to the board and it's appealing to them and we're working with staff right now to try to get started as soon as possible and hopefully we can have a shovel in the ground by as early as the end of this month. That would be ideal for us. That's what we would really hope for. So thank you very much. As I mentioned at the beginning, we've got people here on our team who can answer questions that I can't. Okay. And um, uh, again, thank you very much. Wait, you had one more slide. Don't show don't you? Oh. Okay, sorry. Personal? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Know. That's my grocery list. <laughs> uh, this is a public hearing. I don't believe we had anyone signed up to speak on this issue. Is there anyone in the audience that may have come late that wanted to say anything? Okay. I see nobody. So we can go to the commission. Now remember, this is a preliminary PUD, so we're not getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, but we want to make it clear to the petitioner and the associated people what we're looking for. So that when they come to the final, come back to us for the final, everything's nice and smooth. Correct, Mr. Clicker? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with um, Commissioner Riles. Um, very well uh, presented, uh, outlined, and, and detailed. Um, I, I just have uh, a couple of questions. I live right, right down the, the way from this. Uh, my kids attended London school. Um, I, I just have a question regarding, you know, the greenery that you talked about um, and the, the excess water of it. What, and forgive me if I missed it, I didn't quite get it, but w what happens to that area between London School and the property that you're looking at? Is there, uh, and is there going to be like a, uh, a crossway or anything that you guys thought about as you mentioned currently where the offices are will there be like a passageway or a walkway or something from one uh, location to the other yeah there's two we've got two access points between or proposed access points between our property and London School so one where the cursor is right now that's a sidewalk that is on, it's gonna go on the south side of the new D21 building and then there'll be a striped crosswalk in the, in the parking lot so that the kids or whoever can cross there and then cross over again to the south to get to the school. From Jenkins Court, there's the sidewalk that'll run the entire south side of Jenkins Court from where it terminates, where it ends right now, which is at a fence, it just, the sidewalk just stops, we will pick that sidewalk up and continue it all the way west, again, to a, then we'll stripe the, the existing pavement at London School mm -hmm. and then create a crosswalk. So we're creating two crosswalks and extending sidewalks. So, that, so today, if your kids were gonna go there, they would just walk up King, sure. make a left on Jenkins, and cut all the way across. And they'd walk on sidewalk the whole way. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions. That's it. Uh, let's jump to the other end. Uh, Commissioner Heikin. 
Uh, concept books, great. I have a couple questions about the color of the brick. I, I would be in favor of breaking that up. The samples you brought, they kind of look the same. It would be nice to have different colors. Um, now, my other question is access in and out of the residential area. Is that Jenkins Court? You'll be able to drive in and out through there? Yes. Through the, through the old subdivision? Okay. Yeah. yeah I have no other questions. Um, yeah, no other questions. Thank All you. right. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. I have only a couple. It looks, it looks great. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, about brick, I agree uh, absolutely like that there would be more contrast. Also, maybe it's smooth. Uh, smooth. A smoother finish? Uh, I don't know if it's a cause driven, but uh, it, I, I think maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think mm -hmm. it would look better. Uh, also, um, there was a The fence, if it could be a, a more decorative. The what's that? The brick the or, uh, or the Oh, the pad. fence? I would love a masonry fence all along there. The problem is that's really expensive. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to deliver the most attractive community that we can within the budget constraints that we have. So even... You know, this is something that we deal with every day, but building component pricing is crazy right now. So even this fence, which is nicer than, you know, like a pressure-treated wood fence, which is very nice, is more expensive than a cedar fence, which is very nice, is, is not nearly the cost of the masonry. And we believe that it serves the same purpose. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a separation between that commercial space and the residential, uh, which quite frankly doesn't even exist today. There's no fence at all between the, the people who live on Norman and the commercial. So we think that that's, a, that's an attractive fence. We've done a fence like that in neighborhoods that are uh, more expensive. I would imagine these townhomes are going to be selling in the low to mid 300s. So 300 to 350 in that range, so very nice. Uh, and we think that fence is, is appropriate and nicely uh, attractive and durable. Well, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Berkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I want to say happy that this section is being developed. Um, this is a well thought out plan. Uh, this is going to be one of the first things people see when they're driving into Wheeling from the west, so that's terrific. Um, I did want to second or third maybe the, uh, the comment about the brick, maybe something a little bit brighter, um, you know, and, and um, you know, just pops out a little bit more. Um, but, uh, and then my other question, the administrative building, was that, in the what we received, I understand what what you presented is different. So is that going to be brick? Or That's going to be a mixture of brick, glazing or glass, and then it's a it is a it's a masonry stone material. Okay, okay. It looked like metal on the. Yeah. The no, plans. there's no. Yeah. There's no metal except for around the glazing, except okay. for around the windows. Okay, that's good. Um, and then my other question is probably more for fire department. Um, as far as access into the residential area and an emergency, where, where will you guys be coming in from? Uh, we've done studies from coming in off of um, Dundee Road, but there is access. They've provided uh, access diagrams f coming off of uh, the residential streets too. So either one. Okay. No, con no concerns about turn radiuses or anything? No. Yeah. They've done the studies with the turn radiuses, so we're, we're good with that part of it. Okay. Great. That's all I've got. Thank okay. You. If I if it's a if it's appropriate regarding the brick, that seems to be a a uh, topic of concern. We can have. Well, I'll get in touch with uh, Ryan Holmes, and we'll bring in additional brick samples, and we can go through Marcy. However, you want to handle it. We can bring in samples and kind of let the, let them be sit here, and people can come in and look at them, and we'll hone it down. But we'll work. We're happy to work with you on that. Yeah, it might be. A mix of brick colors, just like the siding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Commissioner Sprague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. 
Um, I'd like to uh, start, uh, let's go back to the fence around the townhomes. Mm -hmm. um, is that fence going to continue on the east and west and north sides, or uh, south side? No, it's just planned for the north side of the townhomes. Okay, is there, so there's not going to be any separation, anything that separates the townhomes from the um, neighborhood? From the residential to the south? No, yeah. the only thing that we're showing on the landscape plan is, you know, there's that land, the existing uh, growth, I'm going to call it, along that, what is our, what is our south property line. Mm -hmm. There's some nice quality materials in there, and then there's a lot of grub that we would go in and take that out, and then we're, we're showing additional plantings there. So our idea on the south property line is to enhance that with plantings as opposed to a fence, because it's residential to residential. Some of those homeowners along the, along the street there have fences already, so their fences would stay. We would simply augment the landscaping on our side of the property line. You're not concerned about any kind of cut-throughs from the yards that butt up to your townhomes? No, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, then back to the uh, fence that's on the north side. Mm -hmm. um, I, too, uh, agree that that needs to have maybe a little bit more, a, a little more upscale or nicer look to it because it faces Dundee Road. And like you mentioned, there's a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very visual. And even though I agree that that fence is, is nice, uh, durable, and does look nice, um, mm -hmm. that's going to be an awful stark, flat, plain, white plain staring at you from Dundee Road. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would prefer something maybe a little softer um, and uh, softer in terms of color and, and upscale uh, no material wise so you would prefer a wood no nah, I, I, I'm leaning towards masonry something masonry no, I don't you know the that, that's my preference. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, the trash enclosure that you have proposed for the uh, administration building, mm -hmm. is there any chance that that could get moved more behind the building so that it couldn't be seen from Dundee Road? Like to the south? Yeah, we can do that. Well, actually it would be, what, to the west? Yeah, you would want it moved, like if you see it on this drawing here, you would want it rotated south and then west, almost in between those two trees, somewhere yeah. around there. Right, right. Yeah, well, I, I think it's located there because of access. I'm not, if you put it on the south side of the building, will the truck still be able to pick it up easily? Uh, he would just have to roll it, he would pull his truck, and he would park parallel with the traffic, and then he would right. roll it out, and he would unload it. Yeah. I mean, we don't, that particular stretch of the road, we don't anticipate there being much traffic there at all. Okay. That would, that would just be my yeah. concern. I wouldn't want to make it um, difficult yeah. to pick up the trash. But we can look at that. Yeah. I, I understand your concern. Mm -hmm. we'll, we will try to address your concern, and Marcy will uh, yeah, work. Yeah, because I think we, you did screen it pretty well on that north side. As far as the renditions for the uh, trash enclosures, that will be included with the final? That will be included with final. Okay. And we understand that there's, you know, that's going to be a process that we're going to pay a lot of attention to. We understand that the village ha wants to make sure that trash doesn't make something look trashy. So we're going to do, a, uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on that. Spend, spend a little bit of that time on that <laughs> fence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you addressed the uh, Jenkins Court Road fairly well. I was concerned about cut-throughs with that from Elmhurst to Dundee or vice mm -hmm. versa. Um, and it does look like it might be a pain in the butt to, to try and do that. But if you found that that didn't detour mm -hmm. cut-throughs, is there some other kind of mitigation that you could add that would deter cut-throughs? We could do, we could do uh, speed humps or something like that. Uh, it's a private road, so we would have mm -hmm. a lot of liberty in terms of installing stuff like that. Just maybe a backup plan in case yeah. 
in case that does happen yeah. more often than you want it to. Right. And we could also install, we have a stop, we have, we do have some stop signs and we could reach out to the police department, but if they tagged a couple of people, it would probably stop. But I think we tried to avoid that as much as possible with yeah. the design. Okay. Um, one more question, and it's for Kyle. Uh, the, ba the basins, are they adequate for the retention that um, they have? Uh, we had a consultant do the review on this, and um, yeah, yes, um, we believe that they are. Obviously, Everything's good. It will be pending, obviously, MWRD review um, in addition to a um, you know, village wheeling final review. But yeah, the basins, if they do need to be tweaked a little bit, um, it shouldn't be major, but they are fairly appropriately sized for um, the detention that's necessary. Great, thank you. Um, I appreciate the um, improvements that you've made. I, I'm in favor of all of them, and uh, I think your project is, at this point, going to be very, very nice. Um, I'm in favor of it, and uh, good luck. Thank you very so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. When you were discussing the townhomes before, you mentioned 10 buildings, but I see 11. On the oh, I'm sorry. It's 11. I apologize. <laughs> just, That's my mistake. Just made a note of that real yeah. quick. All right. Um, See, we already heard from fire on that. Oh, I, one of our, or rather our missing commissioner did have a question they asked me to, uh, to bring up, but I believe we already covered it. He says, regarding the London Crossing project, I was going to comment that I would like them to go back to their design and see if they could bring the retail building up to the street so that the project would follow some of the design guidelines that we reviewed and approved in the station area plan. <clears throat> I think our long-term desire is to create more walking-friendly downtown area with street front retail buildings, and I would include this project in those plans. I believe you touched on it. I, I, if I could add to it, we, yeah, yeah, yes, we have worked with the petitioner quite extensively to bring the buildings closer to the front. Uh, to be quite honest with you, we didn't feel that this warranted uh, the full treatment of the station area study, but we did work with them to enhance the pedestrian access and feel of this area. Uh, the petitioner has agreed to put in an eight foot sidewalk along Dundee Road, along with uh, enhanced landscaping that we believe will further enhance the pedestrian environment. All right, thank you. That should answer his question. Um, just out of curiosity, and you probably probably have to hand it off to someone else, but what's happening with the old District 21 building? <laughs> I do need to swear you in then. But That's okay. <laughs> swear the testimony you're giving tonight to be the truth? I do. And state your name? And My name is Mike Conley. I'm the superintendent at District 21, okay. um, 999 uh, West Dundee Road. Um, so those conversations are ongoing, but what we uh, plan to do is to um, raise the front, absolute front part of the of, of the existing Gill uh, Administration Center, which is the oldest portion. I think it was 1962 um, that that it was occupied. Um, our uh, technology and operations uh, maintenance centers uh, extend all the way back um, towards the park, and so um, that portion of the of the buildings there would remain. What we are really very conceptually looking at doing is um, turning that space that the um, uh, section the Gill administration building is on right now into really a um, an outdoor learning space and so um, again very preliminarily talking about um, putting in um, you know perhaps some ability to have a readers amphitheater um, a um, you know other types of, of stem related um, you know spaces if we can put a small solar array small solar array by the way um, just to um, be able to, to utilize that for some science learning um, you know and I think that that's one of those things where as we get to that point you know we're going to want to engage um, our stakeholders um, in having some conversations around what ultimately um, that space would look like but I think that um, one of the things that we really want to do is to try and capitalize on our space to provide as much learning um, opportunities for our students as, as possible particularly as we continue to move towards really upping the game in our science curriculum uh, and 
uh, towards STEM activities and really trying to be able to, um, you know, pull in the environment, right? Um, so that, that kids can, can really kind of see connections between the space in which they live and what their potential careers may be and so on and so forth. So again, no firm plans at all, um, but those are, are some of the conversations that we're having. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. I'm curious. Uh, let's see. I think all my other questions have been covered. I appreciate you guys working with staff so much and making those little tweaks to the to District 21 building and some of the other things that are, have done so far. And uh, I think you're going to go a long ways in getting to that final. Um, Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Mr. Sprague. Yeah, I, I missed one little thing here that I wanted to uh, bring up. Uh, I went through the shade trees that you're going to use for landscaping, mm -hmm. and I, I read that the um, espresso Kentucky coffee tree can be very messy if it's not in the seedless variety. I just wanted you to make sure that if you're going to purchase those, that they are of the seedless variety. We will get seedless espresso. I know. I know. It, <laughs> it seems, but, you know, it, it can save a lot of headaches in the future. Appreciate it. I have to <laughs> check with Starbucks to see where you get those. That's all I have. <laughs> Anything else down at this end? No. I think everything else. Marcy, did you have something else? Uh, we were just looking over the conditions to see if um, there was anything that needed to be tweaked. And what we were thinking is that um, a lot of the conditions have been addressed in the recent submittals, right. but those weren't um, like officially submitted as part of, it was it was in the presentation tonight, but they're not like the part of the official submittals. So we'd leave them as the conditions that would just be supplemented when you fi uh, submit your final. Okay. Well, would we pick them up for uh, village board we could talk about it afterwards yeah yeah, yeah we could actually if they were submitted between now and the village board we could take them out for the village board for the mm -hmm. village board yeah. yeah um yeah the one thing we were just thinking was the uh, one about the fence how the plan commission uh, felt and i just wanted to ask about the fence so the fence you're proposing that white one that's um like a composite or a, a heavy, um, heavy vinyl, vinyl. Mm -hmm. So, and that's between the northern townhomes and the detention basin. Correct. And there's landscaping along there. Correct. So it's not just a, they're not just seeing the plain white fence. Correct. And so I don't know if a compromise is maybe some additional landscaping. We could do more landscaping. So that's your just point, a it's a fair point. If you're on there. Dundee and you have an unobstructed view straight south, you would see a long white fence. But at the completion of the of the landscaping installation, even before the completion of all the buildings, if you look at this, I don't know if it's on your screen or not, but from Dundee Road through to the fence, there's a lot of vegetation that you have to look through before your eye would hit that fence. So to Marcy's point, we'd be happy to put more landscaping on the commercial side of the fence mm -hmm. to break it up even further, but I think in its, in its final presentation, it won't be as stark as you might, might think. So we, we'd be happy to do that. I just thought maybe that was an option. Yeah, it's sounds. Uh, can I have one question on the fence? Is yeah. it possible yeah. to do black posts and black across the top and leave the middle white? That would dress it up a lot. Uh, I don't know. We can ask. Almost make like a metal look from a distance. Yeah, we can ask. Okay. The other thing I was wondering about, I, I think I've seen them, where it's a vinyl fence, but the top foot or so looks like lattice there's a lattice we can look at that too yeah so, yeah, yeah there, there are options that yeah so i just want to without getting too expensive right so i just want to make sure we don't put this in stone <laughs> yeah because they don't want to do stone <laughs> so we can tweak that wording of that condition to change not a, not referred to the materials but more the decorative appearance yeah that with be with supplemental landscaping, yeah. I would just say that. Well, it, it, they're not fine. showing a board on board fence, anyways. So that was already right. Wrong. This is 
Um, well, I, right, that was in the rec, like the part you were yeah. talking about. Right. I mean that we're going to discuss, but I'm looking in the um, in the actual recommendations. It it doesn't say it in there, does it? No. Yeah, you're thinking about number twelve. That's yeah. the one you're looking at. Yeah. So I'm just talking about oh. number. Oh, that is number twelve. Okay, so the window I'm looking at is like this big. So how about if we're really kind of making sausage here, but how about shall be augmented with landscaping and a lattice top? If I could just, if we could just say that, that they will continue to work with staff on a yeah. final yeah, design. Yeah, I don't okay. want to I don't want to commit to anything right. today. Okay. You don't want to make any sausage? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> other items as far as general feelings of the commission like the well I think we already agreed that having multiple colors on the siding and perhaps the brick um, I I don't have a problem with the horizontal and vertical siding mix I don't know if anyone else on the commission no 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 here okay On the other one you should talk about is the whether a parking study is going to be required or not. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're going to do it. Well, that's a condition in there, so. We're doing it. Oh, you are doing, doing it. We're doing okay. it for the final okay. anyways. Okay. So for the one condition I just said, um, continue to work with staff regarding the design of the fence between the townhomes and commercial areas of development. And it looks like they want to take out number five, though, the siding, horizontal and vertical. Great, that's going to mess up all the numbers. I know, I'm sorry. Okay, so everyone's good taking the siding thing out before I do it? The yeah. Um, yeah. We're all good. Okay. We, we did a, a visual. Uh, did a visual uh, model? A visual poll. Okay. Well, I can fix the numbering uh, later. Yeah. So. Yeah, and. As far as the, I just want know. to make sure. Is there any any other? Were there any other conditions? I that think you we. Saw that? I think everything else was. Yeah, you know, we talked about the brick color and the siding color, and you know they can come up with some other options, but I don't know that you need to rewrite the conditions for that. Um, no, I think it was just there was something in here that trash enclosure. The trash enclosure was in here. I mean, I think they addressed everything. So a lot of the conditions here, like we said. They'll stay here, um, but then they'll submit the information they presented tonight, and then some, a lot of them will go away when it goes to the village board. Yeah, because so we'll keep it. I don't for like right sending now. things to the village board with 19 conditions. Right, so a lot of these will um, come off. So make them go away. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what I actually I know there was another one about the additional shade trees to be provided in the north courtyards. That was comment 19. We will, to Ross's point, we'll continue to work with staff on that. Okay. I just don't want it to be like stuck here if we don't want it. Okay, I think we got okay. them. Okay. Okay. Please don't make me read them. Okay, I have to read them. I didn't ask you, just so you know. Mallory. You want me to read them? No. Well, again, this window is like this big that I'm reading. Oh, mine made some changes. Yeah, she's modified them. So, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then we'll catch anything else then. Okay. Um, number one. The school district administration building east and west building elevation shall incorporate recesses and or projections to reduce the large expanses of blank walls facing public areas. Number two, the school district administration building elevation shall be revised to accurately display the full extents of the proposed building design for each elevation. Number three, the primary material on the commercial building shall be brick. 
Number four, a more traditional residential brick color shall be used for the brick for the residential townhomes. Well, hang on a second. On number three, should it say brick or masonry? Because they're talking about a masonry right. product. If you, if you could uh, change that to masonry. Masonry? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Shall be masonry. Okay. Number five is blank right now. Uh, number six, I'll, I will renumber them though. Um, additional siding color shall be incorporated into the townhome portion of the development to avoid monotony. Number seven, the preliminary designs of the trash enclosure shall be submitted at final PUD. Number eight, more unique lighting shall be incorporated into the development. Number nine, more decorative light pole and fixture befitting to the residential character of the townhome shall be selected. Number 10, additional planting areas shall be provided around the commercial retail building. Number 11, the existing sidewalk along the frontage of the property shall be widened to eight feet in alignment with the village's active transportation plan. Number 12, continue to work with staff regarding the design of the fence between the townhomes and commercial areas of development. Um, number 13, a parking study shall be required for the non-residential portions of the development. Number 14, all wall-mounted light fixtures shall be included in the photometric plan and manufacturer cut sheets for the fixture shall be provided at final PUD. Number 15, details for the group mailboxes within the townhome area shall be included within the final PUD documents for review. Number 16, the design of the bike rack shall be included within the final PUD documents for review. Number 17, prior to preliminary PUD approval by the village board, the landscape plan shall be revised to remove the notation that parkway trees to be planted by the village. Number 18, the existing age landscape island at the eastern entrance drive uh, be updated with new landscaping to match the proposed development to be shown on the final landscaping plan to be included with the final PUD documents for review. Number 19, continue to work with staff regarding additional shade trees to be... Uh, hold on. Continue to work with staff regarding additional shade trees within the north courtyard, within the north courtyards of the townhomes to be similar to those provided within the southern courtyards, which shall be shown on the final landscape plan to be included with the final PUD documents for review. So there's 19, but five was blank, so there's really 18, and a lot of those will go away. Yeah. Most of those are going to be gone. Yeah, at least the before first. Before it gets to the board. Yeah. We, we will stipulate to those. Does that sound okay? Yep. Okay. Last chance for the commission. Anything? To my right. To my left. Mr. Clicker, anything? No, sir. Engineering, We're good. anything? Fire, anything? Just one thing. Uh, sure. Speed bumps are not allowed under the fire code, so that should okay. be eliminated from discussion. All right. So we put in those tire things. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, can't do those. Okay. Um, like a motion on this item. So, so moved. moved. Second. Got Hiken and Blanova. Commissioner mm -hmm. Hiken. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. All right. Now we have to close that. You're not done yet. You're not. Done yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, before we go on to the the plat, uh, we need a motion to close. So moved. This one. <laughs> Second. Commissioner Berkey. Yes. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Hyken. Yes. Commissioner Riles. Yes. Chairman Johnson. Yes. All right. Now for the final one of the evening. Docket 2021-26, preliminary plat of subdivision for London Crossing, 889 to 903 West Dundee Road. Ms. Nice. Um, I think the petitioner explained that they were creating four lots, one residential and three commercial, and this is it. 
<laughs> All right. Petitioner, have anything to add to that? <laughs> Just giving you the opportunity. Very technical. All right, rather than going all the way down the line, uh, are there any questions to my right? Any questions to my left? No. All right, then I need a motion. So moved. Second. Commissioner Sprague is a yes. Commissioner Berkey? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Hyken? Yes. Commissioner Riles? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Don't you wish the first one went that fast? <laughs> Lenovo was a second on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. I will call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Get home before the storm hits. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming, everyone. How far away is it? Uh, well, I haven't checked my radar. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I have some other business, so I better make it quick. It looks okay. Oh, it looks like it broke up and went around us now. We're safe. You guys don't have to stick around. You're free to leave. Unless you have something you want to tell everyone. Oh, no, you told them they're, they're, they're yeah. gone. <laughs> they're, they're already gone. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait for the inevitable Wolf Road questions. And sort of, yeah. So. Yeah, anyone have any questions for them before they leave? Can I you speed bad. it up a little bit? <laughs> We're, we're trying. Yeah. We're, we're trying to push them along a little bit more quickly, but it's just a slow process. All right. Um, close my book too soon. Yeah. All right. Other business. Marcy, you were <laughs> chomping at the bit to speak on other business. So okay. So I'll make it. this quick. So. We've received a couple, um, well, this is really the first one um, for kind of a new kind of sign that's coming out. It's a cloud sign. So our um, wall sign requirements say pretty much that they need to use individual lettering. So we don't allow box signs anymore where it's a flat front and it's just a box. And this is kind of a hybrid where it Four boxes. Four boxes, but <laughs> you can see it's a little cut out. And if you look at the example on the bottom left, it's a different type of lettering, but it's more cut out. So that one I can uh, see how that is. It seems like it's more individual lettering, mm -hmm. but we need the commission's opinion on what you think about the one on top. Is that, are you, do you think that's individual lettering or are those four box signs? And just note that this is probably going to set a precedence because we're going we're gonna to see other ones. Well, I don't like the white space in between. And there's no way they're going to match it to the, the masonry. I don't think it's supposed to be matched to the masonry. It's supposed yeah. to be white and look like a cloud. And then it, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the flip side of this, again, as we've been evaluating this, looking on all sides or trying to come out with this, it would be virtually impossible for somebody to take that face out and put a new face in without it saying right. heaven's barbecue on earth or, right. you know, so if the business were to change, the sign is going to have to change. That's the, if there is a concern regarding the box signs, that's what it was, is that you really never get any change in the signage. It always is the same with just a different panel put in. So again, we, we don't really have a strong opinion either way. We just wanted, wanted to, to know what your thoughts on this were. Well, the sample photo, like I said, that makes it look a little clearer, but I don't know about the barbecue place. Now, I haven't gone back to ask them if they could dig out a little bit more and articulate the letters more, but if, you know, that's something we could go back and make them do to tell them, ask them to make it more like the sample. They, they did provide the sample on the bottom as well. Yeah, I mean, it would be something to look at if they can get us more detail, but I'm not crazy about the, the white space in between the letters because it's not equal. You, know, you get a lot of white between the E and the A in Earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just 
just thinking about this out loud on this, and in no way, shape, or form am I saying that this is how it should go, but if those white spaces were reduced even through just, again, Tinting? they don't have to tint the, the, the white so that it is a, a closer to the facade color. Yeah, I, so it would, it would still look like individual letters then, but yeah. Yeah, I think if they could get it closer to the concrete color, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. That's better than just plain letters. But I think they want it to look like it's on a cloud. Oh, okay. That's why the white. That's my understanding. Is, is that just because of how their logo is? That's, that's how they're... I mean, I've never seen this before, so I... <laughs> I mean, I think they want you to see the white. Just like the one below, I don't think it's supposed yeah. to match the facade. I think. But yeah. that one looks more like a cloud. There's doesn't. Look like I know a cloud. it's hard to picture it. So it it's not it doesn't fill in the whole background. Then it's like patches of clouds. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, clouds don't have those straight lines. It's a bit oh, boxier. I, I it, it's more boxy than the sample. Yeah. Sample, I mean, it's a different font. The font below is much sample more. Sample is more free scripty. flowing, and, and I could consider that a cloud, but. I think the top one looks way too boxy. Yeah. If they can make the font bigger and the gap between maybe smaller, but. No, oh, I get it. Um, looks a little boxy for me. Because then the next step would be they would. Um, come here either for a variance because, well, de just depending on what you say. I guess. But basically, the or they would change it. The the the, the letters, the wordings, ideally should appear as if they're floating on clouds. Is that the? <laughs> is that what the? Okay, I yeah. Think so, yeah. They need to look at clouds because. <laughs> but another way they could have done this was. To have the white clouds and then have individual channel letters on each one. Right. Right. But right. the cost of that was to was more than doing it this way. Right. It's also a very very long name. Yes. They could save themselves some money. Mm -hmm. So. What, what are you looking for from us? <laughs> um, I, your interpretation, does this satisfy the requirement that they're individual letters? I would say no. Yeah, I, I'd have to say you got four can signs based on this. Yeah, this is the middle. If they were to change it, if they were to change it to a different font that made it more cloudy, more cloudy, or again, even more difficult to pop that face out and put something else in without <coughs> it specifically saying those letters, would that be, you know, even though it might still be four cans, individual <coughs> cans, if there's more undulation or more changes, if you will, that would make it even harder to reuse that can in a future application, would that yeah. be more acceptable? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Okay. I think it still might need to be a variance and be more of an acceptable variance for them versus being an interpretation of single letters. You don't you know what I mean? Like it would still be a can sign that had that for a variation and it sounds like the design would need to be more. Well I guess that's what we're trying to figure out. Is it a variance or is it is our interpretation of utilize individual letters. I think that even if they made more undulation with it, make it more cloudy, it's still, it's still a can sign. They're still not individual letters, but it's more aesthetically. More chance they'll get the variance. variance. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing at least. <laughs> yep. Okay. Got what you need? I did. Thank you. That's all I have. That's all? Uh, um. <laughs> I don't know, is it? <laughs> Let me think. Oh, the uh, drum. 
Joint finalized. meeting? Is that finalized? September yes. September and 1st? I believe everybody got notice of that. Okay. Okay. Terry wasn't here. I got the email. Yeah, got oh, email. You did it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah thank yeah, you. Email. Yeah. Yeah. email went out. So, yeah. And everybody agreed that they could make it. Um, and it will be at Public Works. So if you haven't been over there yet, you get a good view of that. Tour of the lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go on a tour just to get to the bathroom from the lunchroom. Um, okay. Um, oh, Commissioner Yednick had one other item that he wanted me to bring up during other business. Uh, he was going to advocate that we increase our COVID-19 protection plans based on the new guidelines from the CDC and the increased infection rates due to the variant strains of COVID-19. I would like to see the partitions brought back and mandatory masking at Village Hall. I'm also still a fan of the virtual meetings. Mr. Clicker, any comments from the Village? Uh, just that the Village evaluates on an almost daily basis our, our stance regarding uh, masking and regarding any type of COVID protection, protections. Uh, we do believe at this point we are still in compliance with the CDC guidelines um, and that, but again, those, those aspects are changing on almost a daily basis and we will continue to make changes as necessary. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, we had no minutes to approve tonight, so motion to adjourn. If nobody else has anything, so moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Who, who was the motion?